Thanks for watching everybody. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and cover some of the new functionality in Forest Vision. I'm trying to make your lives a little easier with these last few updates. Um, first big one obviously here was the Forest Vision editor where I basically scan you know the entire collection of assets that we have and um, I broke them into different categories so up here along the top we've got optimize prefab ground flora background specials these are all categories of objects that are ready to be just you know added to your scene right away so let's say I want to add this if nothing selected and I click in this click on this guy it's gonna dump it at uh, zero zero in the scene um, However, if I do have something selected in the scene, so let's say I have a trunk, um, just for an example, I've got this guy selected. When I pick on something else, um, let's say this guy, it's going to be added um, as the child of that particular object. So um, it's pretty easy to use. Again, um, this half are objects that are ready to be, you know, just kind of added and built into your scene right away. And then this half, trunks, branches, empties, leafies, cards, vines, and basics, these are your kind of tree builders. Um, so again, I'm going to just click on a trunk here. And with it selected, I come in here and, you know, we've got our branches to pick from. Uh, let's say we'll go with some empties here. So with him selected, let me just pick on that one, pick on that one, click on a couple of those. And you see that we've added those to this particular tree. I mean, now do something, do something with them, scale them up, rotate them, you know, make something cool. Um, so I'm going to go and let's say get some branches here. Maybe we pick, I'm still selected on the base. So I'm going to add this one, add that one, add this one. Maybe scale those up. Oh, where's he at? Oh, he's real small. Okay. So you can see we can, you know, build up you know a new variety of tree pretty quickly and um, you know let's say what let's say this is what we were shooting for just some kind of dead looking thing trying to grow back once we once we have that we can use some of these other tools down here um, so the new prefab since that's what this is here is a prefabricated tree with you know other meshes that are combined if I say new prefab at this point it's going to actually save that and there it is now in our prefabs so what happens here under the hood is when it when we save it and it actually creates and adds this uh, force vision item script and assigns it to the prefab so this is how you can um, kind of commandeer the editor for your own um, your own assets. Now keep in mind, you know, you're only going to have these particular categories to choose from. But you know, switching these to any of these other ones will immediately make um, this show up in a different category. So it's now been saved, um, and where it gets saved is in the Force Vision. Um, where is it at here? My prefabs. So whenever you create something and hit new prefab, it's going to create a copy of that here in the uh, my prefabs folder. Now let's say that you know you like this, but you wanna you don't want all of these meshes, then that's what the new optimize will come in handy so if I say new optimize at this point it now bakes that down to where all those sub meshes are gone and you just have this one 
Now we're keeping the materials because um, one of the things that I don't like about Atlas, Texture Atlas scene is um, you typically are going to lose something somewhere. Um, you know, resolution wise, um, something's going to give when you want to go that low. And, you know, I'm, I am going to be adding it soon, but for right now, um, I haven't had a chance to get around to it, so it keeps it um, for now. But, you know, it still knocks the draw, draw calls off pretty good and gives you uh, um, an optimized mesh. And again, once you do that, um, it's now going to show up in your optimized uh, library. Uh, same thing, it's just going to create it and dump that script on it and preset it. So with um, with all this, it's pretty easy to sit there and make new trees. Um, so I'm going to go to the trunks here and let's just pick a new trunk. All right, so we got something, and I'm going to open up the so the high res screenshot tool. Pretty straightforward, nothing major, just ability to take high res screenshots of your objects. Um, you know, depending on whatever your size. Whatever your size is going to be, it's going to show you, you know, what you're rendering and, you know, 8K, 2K, set to the game window, you know, whatever. So you always know what you're about to render. And if you get real, um, real feisty and you want to run these scales up, you can see you can generate images ridiculously high pretty quickly. So I'd be careful with that. Um, anyway, refresh database. Sometimes when you make a make a tree, and let's say you make an optimized mesh or something, you might you might not see it show up right away. Especially if you know, let's say I'll make this into a trunk. You know, or I'm in the optimized channel, and I go new optimize. It might not show up right away. Refresh database will show that. Will force the database to refresh. The latest one is the tree tools. And I've got my trunk made, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I like to just dump this over here. So with the tree tools, um, force vision, source, branches. So here's the main library of branches that we have to um, pick from. And with this, I'm going to just let's say we come in here. And I'm going to load in the branch and um, I don't want five. Let's just keep it maybe two for now. Let's say I'm going to put this one, which is you see here is kind of like a, a card, a filler mesh. Uh, let's put one of those in there. Maybe let's get, let's see. Let's get one of these empties, little dead vines, dead branch here. Um, maybe, eh, I'm not gonna mess with that. That's, I mean, that's enough. Maybe, maybe one of these. All right, so I've got a little collection of branches here, and uh, with the trunk selected. Um, I've got it set to two. Now, if you say right now, it's going to generate two branches. If we say per branch, then you know you're going to get what is that? You're going to get ten. So let's just go ahead and just jump right to generate on all axes and see what happens. So not not pretty, and by no means is that something that you know you're ready to just new optimize, save it, and put it in your game. But you have kind of springboarded. Um, you've gotten to this point a little faster with this. Um, so I'm going to hit clear branches and let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. Um, see what's actually what can be done here. So the generate or delete old branches on generate option. If you don't have that checked, so generate all. So we generated. Um, and if I hit again, because we're not deleting, we're just going to keep adding these branches into the mix. Um, so I'm going to let's 
We'll pick something simple here. All right, per branch type. So, all right, so we got something. Now, your starting height, we, with the delete old checked, you see how we can just sit there and keep pressing, and it's going to keep giving us a different look. And the starting height, it just, it tries to push them up a little bit. You see if we're all the way down, you know, they kind of stay towards the bottom. And, you know, as you creep this up, it'll, you know, work its way upwards. So we've got, um, let's see, I want to, all right, I'm going to clear this again. And so that's to generate on all. Gen X is going to generate just based on um, projecting on the up axis, the up vector of the X direction. X direction. If I uncheck that and hit Gen X, now we're on the opposite side. So same thing, we've got up Y and um, up Z. So let's say I'm going to generate on the Z, so we're coming there. So if I turn it on, now it's going to be on that side of the tree. Um, and same thing, generate Y. You see that he is actually kind of coming up underneath it. And now he's going to be coming down. And mix it up. So you can see, that, you know, it gives you a little bit of, of a nice way of really kind of building... Now the delete old is only really kind of focused on the generate all. Um, these buttons really kind of are like you can see are kind of that manual placement. I like that. Give me another one. Give me another one. Okay. Now let's flip it over. So let's say we've got that. We got them on those sides. Give me something on the X on on the Z. Flip it over to that side. Flip it over to that side, give me something there. And then we can randomize the branches. And let's, you know, eventually you might find something that is workable. If we don't like these, and get rid of them. And take these. Um, so let's just say that, you know, we like that. And say that's okay. Um, I'm not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that this is, you know, going to be that generate, and you're going to have a perfect, beautiful variety of tree. But compared to the way that we used to have to do it, um, you really are kind of getting closer to where you want to go. Now you do have, you know, you can't come in here and rotate these guys and get them into place, and then. Um, you will eventually be able to, you know, get this looking the way that you want and tweak it. With the tree selected, um, you can come down here to the uh, rotate all branches. So let's say um, we move all of them positive or negative based on the Y or based on the X. Or based on the Z. So now they're all rotating in local, and obviously that's going to be world. Um, so we can quickly. So let's let's come back here. I'm going to clear this real quick, and let's just generate. So we have a lot of branches that we just generated. Let's randomize this. A little bit more, and maybe we find something that's doable. Um, let's delete a couple of these. So I pick back my tree, and we can now rotate these. Maybe we just want to flip them quickly, and you can go that way. Or if you want to get, you know, really precise, you can do that. Um, you can just say, you say rotate just selected, 
then it's just going to rotate whatever you have. So, I mean, obviously you can rotate like this, but um, sometimes, you know, get used to just using the tool. I just want to flip it one way really quickly. Um, so, if you don't have that checked, then you need to have, like, the whole trunk checked. So, some extra little things to kind of help you get where you're going and then you've got your scale so scale down all of the branches a little bit scale them up a little bit um, scale them way down or scale them way up and again just the selected so let's say you know that's that's what we like that's the tree we wanted you know I would obviously come in here and say we probably should tweak this a little bit more um, put this on that and flip that guy maybe let's see get them all facing the right directions at least you know and then once once you have it in there you know maybe this this branch would be you know, go in there manually tweak it and place it and you get that final look that you want and then you can go back to um, your editor and then with your tree selected let's say new prefab or if we want to crunch it down say new optimized so it's going to go through and it's going to bake it and the thing to know is that you know it, it does put a mesh collider on your tree so that it can um, find a way of actually putting the objects on your mesh so you know once you have it once you have it baked down you know if you don't want that you can just remove that and you know everything's going to be fine again not to say that that is the perfect tree but compared to how long it would take to get to this point the old way without using the um, the editor or the tree tools uh, we definitely have jumped forward a little bit and I hope that you see the usefulness um, in the tool and again because we've made an optimized where is our new tree at where is it that should be the ugliest one there it is ugly tree let's move him over and now, because I was selected on it, it added it to him as a parent. So deselect, and now there he is. Um, so we have we get rid of it, remove it, and then apply. And now it'll be um, it'll be a part of the actual database when you add it. So anyway, I hope that you found this video useful and. Um, hope that you're enjoying using Force Vision, and if you haven't uh, purchased it yet, I hope that you do. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on the forums, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.